Welcome back to the betting exchange and it's time for odds all. We're gonna see if the odds are or aren't in the favor of our betters, of the athletes and all the games going on. Are y'all ready to start? Ready. ready. All right, Eric, let's start with you. Let's talk about the Nets and the Celtics, all right? That game one was spectacular. Eight people in double figures, eight players in double, double, double totals, including Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving. They went nuclear in that game, all right? I want to know which players' odds are looking, are you looking at in game two? All right, well, I'll start off with KD versus Tatum because Tatum did one heck of a job defending KD in the first game. You know, held him to 9 for 24 shooting, 1 for 5 from 3-pointer, four six turnovers. KD did not play well. Tatum, as you said, he mm -hmm. went off. So I'm looking for KD to have a big bounce-back game tonight. I'm taking him over 29.5 points just because... If you know anything about KD, he is very spiteful, and he's going to come out here trying to prove a point tonight. So I think he goes off. Shoot, he's spiteful to the betters, too. So if he knows that's True. what his over-under is and they have the game in hand, <laughs> he ain't going over. He's right. saying he's taking the under, all right? KD, let's talk about the New York Mets mm. now. Now, five of the last six World Series champions carried a runs per game average at five. Through 10 games, the Mets are averaging around 5.1 runs per game. They've only finished above five three times in franchise history. So what are, what are the odds that the Mets can keep this unusually high scoring offense going and follow that championship trend? Well, the odds are this is going to be tough for the Mets to keep up this level of scoring. And you know, as a Mets fan, they tend to let you down at some point in the season. And we all know that I took them under their win total. So <laughs> look, I think it's great that they're scoring a lot, especially with their pitching rotation banged up right now. But they are likely to regress a little bit. So the odds are I wouldn't put too much weight into this quite yet. But I, I get you. You can't have the competing interest with your unders <laughs> total, right? So I definitely <laughs> get that. All right, Alex, let's go to the Bronx and talk about the New York Yankees. Garrett Cole, he's done well against his career, in his career against the Tigers. 1.92 ERA, nine career starts. Through two starts this year, he has a 5.59 ERA. What are the odds that Garrett Cole can bounce back on the road tonight? Yeah, I think the odds are pretty good. Um, I think this is a good spot for Garrett Cole and the Yankees. We're going to talk more about that uh, in the next block. But uh, this current Tigers roster has a 224 average against Cole and a 34.7% strikeout rate. And they've really just struggled at the plate so far this season. Bottom third of the league in strikeouts, 27th in hits per game, 26th in slugging percentage, and 23rd in on-base percentage. Just not a good Tigers team. So I think Garrett, Garrett Cole is, uh, is due for a bounce back tonight. All right. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. All right, Eric, let's talk about the NFL draft. I know you're in heavy draft mode right now. <laughs> April 28th. All the teams that need a quarterback, all the fans, they're clamoring. They, are we going to get the next Drew, Joe Burrow? Are we going to get somebody that can lead us to a Super Bowl? But what are the odds that a team will draft a quarterback that leads them to the Super Bowl in the next five years? Ooh. I think, I, think, I think the odds are, are very low on mm -hmm. that. Because have you seen the quarterbacks in the AFC? Not great. I mean, you, yeah. oh, you, yeah. you talk about everyone upgraded AFC East. You got Buffalo with Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson going up to the Browns. Uh, there are so many elite quarterbacks right now. They're creating these super teams. It's going to be hard for one of these young quarterbacks. You know, I can see a Malik Willis possibly going to a Steeler team that has a great defense, has a great uh, network around him thriving a little bit, but to make it to the Super Bowl, I don't think that's going to happen in the next five years. Mm -mm. Yeah, and even if we did know, we wouldn't know until five years from yeah, now, right, the way back. the quarterbacks have developed. Yeah. So I definitely get that. Katie, let's talk a little golf. Let's talk about the match, celebrity uh, and, and athlete tournament yeah. going on. We got the GOAT, Tom Brady, and Aaron Rodgers teaming up to go against Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. If you've seen things from the match before, you know they love to cut up. You get some <laughs> exclusive commentary. You actually get to okay. see them excel in a sport that there's, that's not their first option, right? What are the odds are you, of you seeing, are you seeing for this QB match in heaven between Rodgers and Brady being on the same team? Well, it kind of depends on how you look at it, right? If you're looking at the handicaps alone, you might want to go with the old guys because Aaron Rodgers actually has the best handicap here at 4.6. Josh Allen and Tom Brady are tied at about an 8.1 handicap. And Mahomes doesn't really have one, but it's rumored to be he's about 7.7. .7. But Tom Brady may be the go, but he's not the go to the match. He has lost two of these in a row. But if we're going to go with handicaps, I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers on this one. 